Yes, I watched the Packers lose to the Lions 15 to 9 in possibly the new, 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 new worst game I've ever seen. Uh, the Lions heading into this game boasted the worst scoring defense on Earth. And actually the universe. After visiting a planet we've never heard of, Elon Musk tweeted that even the football teams there were harder to score on than Detroit. But don't tell that to Matt. I'm being exposed without all of my trusted coordinators, Lafleur and the Packers, who were stopped twice from within the five yard line, three total times in the red zone by yes, the Lions. Injuries are piling up for Green Bay, but if you can only score nine against a team previously allowing over 32 per game, you may need to look in the mirror. That same mirror that helps you manicure those perfect eyebrows and then smash that fucker to pieces and use the sharp edges to threaten your coward GM who can't bring in real weapons for your quarterback. number of ways I can go with that. Um. <clears throat> The 2022 Detroit Lions will be the team that can and will beat the Packers. Let's relive this football game. That's good sports. Today's episode is sponsored by Manscaped, and it's the Bala Days. After three straight years of petitioning the US government, I have failed to convince them to change the word holiday to Bala Day. But damn it, I'm not gonna stop trying. Just like you should never stop trying to keep your downstairs area perfectly groomed. What gift do you desire this season? Well, why not ask for a gift that's also a gift for that special someone in your life and request the Performance Package 4.0 by Manscaped. It's the ultimate grooming package for your package that can be nicely wrapped in a package. Package cubed. Now Manscaped created the first all-in-one men's grooming kit that has you covered from your head to your little missile toes. Now when you shop manscaped.com slash good sports, they will hook you up with two free gifts when you purchase the performance package bundle. You're gonna get the shed travel bag and the Manscaped anti-chafing performance boxer briefs. Oh my God, I forgot about the boxer briefs. Literally my favorite boxer briefs on earth. Give it as a gift if you already have Manscaped products and happy holiday, holidays. Dang it, I can't even remember what a, holidays. If I can quote Don Shula, uh, one of the greatest NFL coaches to ever do it, he said, if your offense can't score in the red zone, you ain't shit, bitch. In fact, you a straight sucker. Now Shula could not say that today, but that quote is more true than ever, and the Packers put that on full display against the Lions. When your quarterback starts doing this on the sideline, screaming at no one in particular after a horrible play that was totally his fault, you've got real problems. When your QB gets on a telephone that hasn't been connected for a decade, asking for help, you've got problems. Aaron Rodgers threw not one, not two, but three interceptions in the end zone area. The Lions only had two total picks on the season heading into this game. Aaron Rodgers went into this get right game with a sweet tooth, but when he tried to steal that candy from the baby, that baby grabbed his arm, broke it off, and then forced him to throw the entire game with his left arm, like Tua's dad did to him. Aaron Rodgers' first red zone pick was mostly just bad luck. 
And that kind of happens when your team's not good, right? Rodgers is trying to hit Lazard, who is open in the end zone, but blasts Derek Barnes in the face like he's James Dean, and the ball is caught off the ricochet by Detroit. And Barnes was not evaluated for a concussion after that play. But I think all players who get hit in the head with the football should be. First and goal from the five, and you throw it on first down, Green Bay? Now normally I would not criticize this strategy with the QB like Aaron Rodgers, but when your offense is struggling to score and everyone knows you throw a little too much, just pound the rock in. In his back-to-back -back MVP seasons, Aaron Rodgers didn't throw a single red zone interception. He threw three in this game and has four on the season. Welcome to hell, Packers fans. It's, it is warm here. Aaron Rodgers' second red zone pick was actually a perfect play design. David, Afra Sayab, Asad Bakhtiari slips out as an eligible lineman. Rodgers throws across his body but shorts the throw like the housing market in the late 2000s. And the rookie Aiden Hutchinson gets his first career NFL pick. Now this red zone trip was the one that got Packers fans feeling exactly like Broncos fans. They had a first and goal from the one after this pass to Alan Lazard was just short of the end zone. Broncos fans know, being on the one yard line with four downs don't mean shit. How sad of a fan do you have to be to see a great play go to the one? and feel nothing but dread because you know, since he didn't score there, your offense probably won't punch it in. That's the world I've been living in, Packers fans. What type of level of sadness is that? That's a, uh, I'm a mime for a living type of sadness. Now, remember when I said just pound it in? Well, Green Bay did try here. First and goal from the one hand off to AJ Dillon. He picks up a fourth of a yard. Second and goal from the three-fourth yard line. Ah, uh, they throw the fucking ball. Sammy Watkins, Aaron Rodgers, clearly not on the same page here. Foreshadowing. Third and goal, they do run it, and it's Derek Barnes making a huge stop, quickly filling the hole to stuff A.J. Dillon. So I say run it again. Learn to be a physical football team or die. Green Bay chose death on that nice play design that just didn't work. Now Aaron Rodgers' third red zone pick was just a desperate pass attempt as he tried to force one in. Like Tom Brady's plastic surgeon trying to force one more year of youth into Brady's collapsing face. Technically, Green Bay wasn't in the red zone, but if it's intercepted at the two, it's a red zone pick. Green Bay had just benefited from a great pick and run by Jair Alexander, an opportunity to get right back into the game that they were trailing only by eight points at that time. Here's what's crazy to me. We've seen Aaron Rodgers complete this pass like once a week for the last 15 years. It's what's made him great. We expect him to fire this ball with godlike precision and velocity, possibly from his back foot while blindfolded, split the defenders and sneak it in for an unlikely touchdown. He just does that shit. Which he did drop a dime to Alan Lazard for a touchdown a couple series later. But when everything around you seems to be going wrong, those plays don't seem to happen that often. Now, Lazar did score a touchdown, and even that didn't totally work out for Green Bay, who went for two uh, to try and tie the game. Rodgers goes back to Lazard, only to see Jeff Okuda make a hell of a play and knock down the ball. And just like last week, the Packers lost too many key contributors to injury in this game. Romeo Dubs went down after making one catch. Rashawn Gary left with an injury. Eric Stokes left with an injury. Aaron Jones left with an injury. David Bakhtiari injured. I don't know why I keep doing this. Uh, it's not an excuse. Uh, the Chargers won today with about eight starters, but it is a real reason for a team that struggles in the NFL. Uh, the Lions traded away one of the better tight ends in the league last week. And all Detroit did was throw touchdowns to all of their other tight ends. Lions score with Shane Zilstra. That's right. Who is the widest open player of the weekend and another to James Mitchell. Jared Goff totaled just 137 passing yards, but put together two key touchdown drives that were enough to get the dub. Now this game wouldn't have justified a breakdown or a worst ever had the Packers not had a chance to win at the end and still lost. 
It's really hard to lose a football game that the football gods seem to want you to win, but that's exactly what the Packers did. No longer are defenses terrified of Aaron Rodgers if he has the ball with less than two minutes on the clock. No longer are we saying, but you left too much time on the clock for a god. We're saying the clock? That's fucking winding down on Rodgers' career. On their final drive, the Packers fumbled the ball twice by the sideline on back-to-back -back plays, and both times it did not hurt them. Both fumbles go back to Green Bay. Both of those fumbles could have ended the game. But even with Lady Luck on their side, the Packers couldn't overcome the Lions' defense, who, all jokes aside, actually played a damn fine game. Sure, there were some Packers' mistakes, but I saw more opportunities created by the Lions' defense. Final play of the game, Sammy Watkins and Aaron Rodgers were again not on the same page. They weren't even reading the same fucking book. Rodgers probably reading some pseudoscience publication Joe Rogan gave him. And Watkins, well, he's reading Jane Eyre. Bet you didn't know he was a Charlotte Bronte fan, did ya? Now, Rodgers clearly thought Watkins would break outside. He goes in and the Packers lose on this incomplete pass. This is a great example of why uh, it's not just about being a good receiver that's important, but having chemistry with your QB, which does take time to develop. That's the kind of play Rodgers and Adams probably connect on 10 out of 10 times. But when you're trying to build trust with two rookies, both who have now been injured on and off and your most trusted target in Alan Lazard has been hurt and you're forced to rely on Sammy Watkins who's not getting all the reps with the first team, you're not going to succeed at the levels an elite offense is used to doing. Now, Derek Barnes and Kirby Joseph basically united to make six of the most important plays in this game. Joseph is a rookie, a fifth round rookie, and Barnes has been a depth player at linebacker. Two goal line stops were entirely Barnes is doing. He sacked the shit out of Aaron Rodgers late in the second when Green Bay was driving, forcing a third and 18, which ended their drive two plays later when they failed to convert a fourth and three. That gave Detroit great field position and they scored the first touchdown of the half and converted the two point play after that sack. Why did they go for two? Well, just a Packers penalty on the PAT, running into the kicker, which was unfortunate because the PAT was a disaster for the Lions who managed to wrangle this terrible snap, but not well enough to get off a clean kick. Had Jair Alexander touched this ball, it would not have been a penalty, but in the end, that wouldn't even have mattered. Kirby Joseph picked off Rodgers twice, but his best play may have been this pass defended on a home run shot to Alan Lazard by Rodgers. Again, one of those days where the defense just seemed to be better than the Packers offense. This was Rodgers' first three pick game since 2017. A time when I was rooting for Trevor Simeon as my Broncos QB1. And that, Packers fans, is life after Rodgers which will be worse than what's happening to you right now. Think about that. Yeah, think about that shit. Thanks for watching That's Good Sports Breakdown of the Green Bay Packers shitting the bed against the Lions. Please come back tomorrow for the best and worst of week nine where I recap all of NFL Sunday action.